Welcome to the expression of the Father's love. May God bless you. May God cause his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you and grant you his wonderful peace. Today is a happy privilege of mine to share the word once again to you. And I want to encourage your heart from the book of St. John, chapter number 3 and verse 36. St. John, the third chapter and the 36th verse. It speaks to a very profound text that I want to share with you today on. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I do audio, audio, any other thing, I would like to pray. Father, touch every viewer. Open hearts. Encourage hearts today. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the life of your word will bring life to the hearer who would receive it today. I pray, oh God, that for those who are listening and viewing this program, that God, that you would minister to them, oh God, in areas of their life that they need, oh God, this ministry. For those who need healing, heal them. For those who need, need deliverance, deliver them. For those who need salvation, grant salvation. For those who need a word, give them a word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for doing it today. In Jesus name let us read the portion of scripture from John chapter 3 verse 36 hear what it says he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him father bless your word again in Jesus name amen I want to speak on the subject having life having life is a very important and wonderful experience I want to speak to that subject because many people are alive but they are not experiencing life as it were when I speak to life I am not speaking about the mere idea that you are able to see, you are able to hear, you are able to feel and to touch. I'm speaking far more deeper than this. I'm speaking about having everlasting life. And I will clarify what I mean when I speak to everlasting life in the very text. This discourse, hallelujah, was taken, hallelujah, when Jesus was speaking to one Nicodemus. He was convinced as well as the other uh, members of the Pharisees that this Jesus had to be one who came from God. Because out of his own lips, he says, no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus cut to the chase you must be born again hallelujah having been born after hallelujah your your the, the earthly birth hallelujah doesn't speak hallelujah to the birth that jesus wants us to have because many people hallelujah they came through this world to a mommy and a daddy but hallelujah jesus wants us to have far more life than just merely existing he wants us to experience the everlasting life and in order to get that experience you must be born again and this is the born again experience is what I'm harping on today and Jesus speaks to the fact that hallelujah you must have this everlasting life this is something that is critical hallelujah because when we came into the world hallelujah when God breathed the breath of life into us we became a living soul a living soul so in other words hallelujah our soul will never cease to exist but it it will spend its eternity one or two places one of two places either in heaven or in hell if you are in heaven you got to experience the everlasting life that I'm going to speak about but if you are in hell you are going to experience everlasting life hallelujah which speaks to death and today I want you to understand today that Jesus is calling upon not just Nicodemus but everyone who hears this word to come and experience this everlasting life how oh, we are going to experience Experience this everlasting life. Jesus tell us in this very text how we're going to experience it. He tells Nicodemus in the closing verse of chapter number three, he that believeth on the Son 
This is all you're going to experience this everlasting life. You got to believe on the Son. But he did not just say believe. He says, he that believeth. It speaks of a belief that continues. Hallelujah. That affects every area of your life. A belief that is deepened and cognitive. It is an experience of a lifestyle that is changed. Where Jesus Christ now lives within you. He's talking about, hallelujah, you must continue to believe by demonstrating it by your faith. Many of us, hallelujah, we have to be preached the gospel and you hear the word of God. It is calling for one thing, that you exercise faith in what you have heard and therefore you respond in a positive way. There are many people who have heard the word of God time and time again and they have never yet responded in a positive way. You may ask how can I respond in a positive way when I hear the word of God he's asking you to believe and it, this, this very concept is clarified in the book of 1st John in fact St. John chapter 1 and verse 12 but as many as receive him but as many as receive him to them gave he the power to become the son of God if you're going to demonstrate that you believe in him you gotta receive this Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. I don't know. You gotta receive him, sir. You gotta take him as your Lord. You gotta take him as your Savior. And this is what it's calling for. You just can't just hear the word of God and continue to shun, hallelujah, the Son of God who died for our sins. When we receive him to him into our lives, we are saying, Lord, you are now master. Lord, you are now in control. Lord, I will ask your directive. I will depend on your leading. I will follow your word. I will do what you say. My God, this is a cold concept of believing. You can't say you believe in the Son of God and you do not do the things he's asking of you to do. If you believe in the Son of God, there are places you know that you will not go. There are things that you're involved in that you will not be involved in because you're share in a relationship with God. John in the book of first John he tells us hallelujah in verse 5 hallelujah and this is a fellowship hallelujah he that walketh in the light as he is in the light have fellowship one with the other and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin Yes, sir, we must understand the fact that John is calling for all of us to understand that this Jesus, this Jesus, the Son of the living God, hallelujah, wants us to understand that we have to walk in the light. We have to walk, hallelujah, as God guides us because he sets a plain direction for us to follow. You got to walk in the light. You got to do those things that are right in God's sight. If you have him as your Lord and Savior. It calls to believe. That's why in St. John chapter 3 and verse 36 says, He that hath the Son hath everlasting life. Yes, sir. Because after you believe in Him, after you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, you are not just receiving life, but you are receiving everlasting life. It is an experience, sir. It is an experience of joy and peace as this world don't know and this world cannot experience it is an experience of joy that will never come to an end that begin in this life and never cease to exist it begins with you accepting this Jesus as your Lord and Savior that's why the writer tells us hallelujah he that hath the son you want to have life you must receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior if you don't, you can't experience this everlasting life which speaks of eternal joy, eternal peace, eternal hallelujah, glory in the presence of Lord, where you are able to see him for yourself, where you 
you are able to look upon his face I am speaking about everlasting life where you speak of no more pain no more sorrow in this life you will get sorrow in this life you will experience pain in this life you will experience misery and heartache but there is a place hallelujah that Jesus Christ will carry those who believe and continue to believe in him in a place that will no more experience death or separation ever again but in order for you to experience this everlasting life it comes with the number one condition you gotta believe and continue to believe in him and when you do believe in him it's going to be manifested in your character it's going to be manifested in your department there are places you will not go there are things that will not come out of your mouth there are some places you will not sleep there's a relationship you will not keep because you are mindful to do what his word says you gotta believe it's not a one-time experience is an experience of a lifestyle Hallelujah, that demonstrate that I am a servant of God and I'm under divine obligation Hallelujah, to obey his word my God my God Hallelujah, John and 1 John chapter 1 and verse 6 says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Because many people have the idea because I just pray on mornings and I just pray before I go to bed and I just go to church occasionally that they have the Son of God resident in their lives. No, sir! We can only have the sun resident in our lives when we open our mouth, confess our sins before him and accept him as our Lord and Savior and purpose in your heart to follow him. It's not an occasional hallelujah walk. It's a fellowship. It's a relationship that is tight. It's a relationship that is bonded together. It's a relationship, hallelujah, that goes by his terms and not my terms. That's why John says, if we say that we have fellowship, that we have partnership with God, and we walk in darkness, we do evil, we do mischief, in our hearts we have all kinds of evil. How can you say that you have fellowship and the Son of God resides there? If you say that and you walk contrary to his word, John says you are lying. And you do not the truth. But John says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with the other, and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. If you walk in the light, light speaks of truth. Why light speaks of purity? Light speaks of holiness. And you can't say you're walking holy. You are walking in the light. You are walking in truth. And you are harboring darkness. Darkness speaks of sin. Darkness speaks of evil. Darkness speaks of wickedness. Darkness speaks of unforgiveness. Darkness speaks of maliciousness. Darkness speaks of thefts. Darkness speaks of idle words. Darkness speaks of corruption. So Jesus is telling Nicodemus very, very clearly in the text, if you want to experience this everlasting life, you must believe on the Son of God. You must believe, exercise your faith in him, respond to his word, and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know how much time after hearing the word of God, a lot of people turn away. A lot of people put it off for a convenient season. 
A lot of people said not yet because they want to accomplish their own home. They want a certain lifestyle. They want to wait until they are old and are looking to die and hope before they shut their eyes they say, oh God, forgive me. They want to exercise themselves in both worlds. They want to enjoy the world and enjoy God. You got to choose. Because when you choose the Son as Lord, you are obligated to obey Him. Yes, sir. And when you do, you are guaranteed everlasting life. Because John says, He that believeth on the Son, have it. He that believeth on the Son, hath everlasting life. The second thing I want to draw to your attention today, as the writer tells us, if you don't have the Son, you don't have everlasting life. Everything is hinged on the Son of God. It is He, hallelujah, it is He that God sent to die for our sins. It is he, and John the writer in 1 John chapter 1, chapter 2 and verse 2, hallelujah. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for us only, but for the sins of the world. God, hallelujah, laid on Jesus, according to Isaiah, the iniquity of us all. He paid the price for us. A price we could not pay for ourselves. And therefore, John, Jesus had the right to tell, tell his disciples, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the only means to God and to experience the everlasting life. And if you don't have him, you cannot experience the everlasting life I'm speaking about. Everything hinges on the sun. And he that does not have him. He that does not believe on him. He that does not exercise his faith. And receive him into their heart. As their Lord and personal savior. They cannot experience this everlasting life. You may say, preacher, I believe in another faith. I believe in another individual. I'm saying to you, sir, if you don't believe on Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God and Him and Him alone, you cannot experience this everlasting life I'm speaking about. Cannot! Everything hinges on it is He who died for us, nobody else. It is he who became the propitiation for our sins. The one who appeases almighty God by his sacrificial death. He alone. And if you don't have him as Lord of your life. If he's not dictating the decisions you make. If he's not dictating the way you worship. If he's not dictating the word you obey. Then he's not a part of your life. We got to accept him by faith. You got to entrust your entire life in his hands. But if you don't, you cannot experience this everlasting life. You may ask, preacher, but if I'm not experiencing this everlasting life, what am I experiencing? Right now, I'm very happy that you ask that because right now, if you do not have the Son of God in your life, the very text tells us that the wrath of God is abiding on you. The wrath of God abiding. You know what is the wrath of God? The wrath of God will only be made manifest. After you would have exhausted every opportunity of receiving the grace of God and you should die in your sin, you are now exposed eternally to experience the wrath of God. 
He says, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, you are on the divine, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, obligation, Hallelujah. He's extending his love and his grace while you're living upon this earth. But if you continue to shun him, if you continue to say no to him, if you say you don't want him or you don't believe in him, Hallelujah, what you are doing, you are exposing yourself actually to the wrath of God. Hallelujah, you are drawing yourself closer and closer to a place, hallelujah, where there will be no escape, where there will be eternal banishment, no hope, eternal pain, and eternal misery. Some may say you're saying that to scare us. No, sir, this is the reality. That's why Jesus lingered. That's why he's passionate, hoping that after hearing the word of God, you will make a sensible decision and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior because he's the only way to the Father. Any other way will not lead you there. Your good works will not lead you yet there. Your occasional giving to the poor will not lead you there. Your occasional visit to the church occasionally will not get you there. What will get you there is the fact that you receive this Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior and you've made up your mind. I'm going to follow his word. I'm going to obey him. I am going to have a relationship with him. I'm going to maintain fellowship with him. I am going to walk in the light. I'm going to walk pure. I'm going to walk holy. I won't have a garbage. I won't have of maliciousness, wickedness, and sin in my heart. This is what Jesus wants us to know. If you do not have or do not believe in the Son, if you reject Him, the only hope, you are only exposing yourself to the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not easy. I remember in the very text in the book of Exodus <coughs> we are told how some of the folks did not want to follow Moses the earth open up. The wrath of God caused the earth to open up. And many slipped right into hell. I remember in the book of Exodus we are told. My God. That the wrath of God was poured out on Sodom and Gomorrah. Literally fire and brimstone came from heaven and consumed the city and every inhabitant thereof. And that statement still prevails today. That God hates sodomy. He hates it. And he's hoping that men will learn from the example of the past. Seeing the wrath of God. We cannot embrace something that God hates. We cannot embrace something that God despises. I want you to know, hallelujah, that God loves every sinner man. But if you continue to harden your heart, if you continue to stiffen your neck, if you continue to say no to God, you are only exposed in yourself to the wrath of God. I don't know when it will fall on you. I don't know when you are going to experience it. There are some people who are cut off in the middle of their game. In the middle of their lifestyle. Hallelujah. I've seen coffins and funerals with young men. And they said just like that he died. Just like that. Don't reject God. It's not a safe thing. Rejecting Jesus, the only way of salvation, it is not safe. It is a death sentence. 
rejecting Jesus, yes sir, it is a death sentence. And when I speak to death, I'm not just talking about six feet deep. I'm talking about eternal death. I'm talking about death that is eternally separated from God where there will be no more hope of ever coming out. No more hope of enjoying peace. No more hope of enjoying pleasure. No more hope of rest. No more hope of mercy. You wonder why people have this knowledge, why they keep putting off and procrastinating on making the most important decision, and that decision is to have life. Do you have life today? Do you have Jesus abiding in your life today? If not, it is not a certain to go on life without him. It is not a safe thing to just merely exist. I'm urging you today. I'm encouraging you today. As the word of God says, but as many as receive him, Jesus, to them gave he the power, the authority to be called the son of God. He came today to make you his own, to make you a child of the king. How are you going to become a child of the king? By receiving this Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. How can I do that, Pastor? It's a step of faith. By faith right now. Say, Lord Jesus, go ahead. I believe that you died on this cross for my sins. I believe I am guilty and worthy of the wrath of God. But today I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. By faith, I receive this Jesus into my life to become my Lord and personal Savior. I will obey his word. I will follow him. I will uh, commit my life to a relationship with him. And by faith, I say, come into my heart right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have done that, you are saved. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church in your area and go there. Make this Sunday a Sunday, hallelujah, of new brand fellowship with the Lord. The next time you go to church is not just as a religious routine, but right now you're just, you're going there, hallelujah, with a newfound experience. I'm going to share my faith. I'm going to walk with God, and I'm going to enjoy the presence of God. Get a Bible and read it. Tell somebody of the decision you have made. Get water baptized. Yes, ask the pastor to baptize you because you have made a decision. He may carry through a few classes to ensure that you understand the decision you have made and therefore you make the plunge with you sooner or later. God bless you. He loves you. Jesus Christ is the expression of the Father's love. Why not receive him today as your Lord and personal Savior? Until next time, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs>